And I'm going to start this live. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to day three of the 10 day live Cunty Fire Life Challenge. So far, we've had so much fun. The first day was an intro to why, what is Cunty? Why or did I create this acronym and this empowerment tool? And is it more than just me swearing on the internet? Yes, it is. It very much is. It's a whole movement. And on day two, we talked about courage and why courage has to be the very first and most fundamental thing that precedes all of the other important pillars that we're going to be talking about each day. Courage had to be spoken about first and foremost yesterday. Now, today, we are still in phase one of the three C's, so yesterday being courage. Today is about curiosity, and I am so excited for this one um, because I as I was thinking about it, I just started getting so many little popcorn ideas of all the ways that it's so cunty to be curious with ourselves and curious with the world around us. And to not just take everything for face value or take things as, you know, as automatic truths, there's a lot of cunty value in like really being critical and asking questions. Hi, Lauren. Um, asking questions about everything that surrounds us, especially as we navigate this world of entrepreneurship that no surprise here, it was not built for us who, have, who are part of marginalized, historically marginalized communities. We're not part of the privileged group of entrepreneurs in our society. So it behooves us to be critical and curious about everything that we encounter in this world if we want to make massive change, if we want to pursue these incredible missions, if we want to grow our businesses and and have success for us and for our clients and for our communities, we have to have, we have to hone in on this craft of being curious. So I have some folks here on the Instagram live. I have some folks here in the Zoom room. I'm so happy to hear you, have you all here. Thank you so much for joining today. And I'm going to talk a little bit more and then I'm going to open up the floor to some questions. But first, I wanted to talk about some of the ways that we need to be curious. So one of the first ways is with limitations. Now, let me know, drop it in the chat if you've had something, somebody put a limitation on you or you've put a limitation on you and you, you decided to pause and be like, but actually, where did that come from? Where did that limitation come from? Why am I saying that? And is that actually true, right? Let me know, because this is a really important thing. We have to get used to stopping ourselves when actually first we have to be aware of how we're stopping ourselves, right? Because a lot of this is subconscious. So that's why the first pillar, like we talked about in my framework is acknowledge. Once we've acknowledged our mind gremlins and our limitations, how can we get curious about what they are and if they're actually truth? Like, can these things stand up in the court of law? Most of the time, probably not. It's probably some made up bullshit or something that someone somewhere told us was true and our minds just took it and have been running with it. Oh, wait, someone's joining in. Let's let her in. Um, so Rebecca says, I was trained that nurses are the heart of healthcare and it shouldn't be about the money. Yes, um, that is so true. So when it comes to money, there are so many stories. Hey, Sunny. When it comes to money, there are so many stories that we have been told. And it's no surprise because a lot of these money stories are in direct correlation with either our gender, if we're socialized as femme, or any of the various marginalized communities we come from, that we shouldn't care about money, money is not for us, money is, is, is evil, 
And it's very, it's done in a very intentional way by the oppressive systems that be that then allow the privileged group to then joyfully accept the money. And us, we are trained to not want it and not go for it. So thank you so much for sharing that. And it's incredibly important then how, and I'd love to ask, how have you then gotten curious about that, that story and started to question that story for yourself? Because that's always the next, the important part. And that's why I wanted to talk specifically about curiosity today, because it's one thing to acknowledge and learn about, oh, wait, this is a story. This does, this isn't an automatic truth. And then it's, it goes into, so what am I going to do about that? And how am I going to get curious about who created this story? Why I've been operating under this assumption and how I'm going to get the fuck out of it. <laughs> so like very important is to question our limitations. The other thing I want us to get curious about is our quote unquote failures. This is such a fun one because we are also, we, of course, same story when it comes to um, systems of oppression and, you know, unfair equity injustices in our systems that um, we are made to try and be perfect because we're always seen by the privileged group and by society as a whole as like not good enough. We're not, we're not doing enough. We're not good enough. And we need to be perfect just in order to like almost be on, on par. We need to be perfect in, in order to even play the game. We have to be perfect. And of course that is harming us. That's holding us back. That's keeping us small. And it comes into play when we quote unquote fail at something, when something doesn't go perfectly or it doesn't you know, amount to what we wanted it to amount to, because lo and behold, we have a lot of perfectionism, um, then we, we let it determine and define us so much. I don't know if anyone on this call can identify with that and say, and, and let me know if like, if there's been a failure in the past before, where you almost let it define you and stop you. And just like be it just take it as truth, right? It's like, oh, I failed at this, so it mustn't be for me, or I must not be good at it. If we're talking about money again, we do that a lot, right? It's like, oh, I, I didn't pay a bill on time, therefore I'm a failure, therefore I suck at money, therefore I shouldn't have money, right? Like we go on these, these trajectories that are complete bullshit, and this is why we have to call on our cunty curiosity to come in and interrupt that that process, that negative process, and get curious about what am I making this failure mean about me? And why am I even calling it a failure? Is there even another way of looking at this that is actually a win in a way, right? So cunty, right? Like <laughs> Such an amazing way to look at it and think about it. Uh, so Rebecca says, my skills are worth more than anyone can ever pay me. I can care for people while being paid extremely well and stand up for new healthcare workers to not put up with the same bullshit. Yes. Oh, mm, yes. Sunny says, fuck yes, Rebecca. I love this. Oh my God. This is, this is it right here. This is why I made this challenge. I fucking adore you all. This is it, right? This is, these are the, the interruptions, the pattern interrupts that we can empower ourselves with once we bring curiosity to the table, because it interrupts all of those automatic patterns that have been programmed into us, it allows us to interrupt and to get curious and then create our own patterns and create our own healing pathways and conversations with ourselves and affirmations and all of that good, good stuff. We are inherently worthy. Yes. Yes, we are. Love it. And I love your smoothie and I want some. <laughs> I'm happy for you. She, Sunny showed up yesterday with a smoothie too. And I'm like, she, yo, you're, li you're living your best life. I'm so happy for you. I love smoothies. I'm going to have one after. Okay. The next thing, <laughs> I'm glad it's so good. The next, we have fun. We have fun. I love it. 
<laughs> the next thing I want us to get curious about, and this one might ruffle some feathers, but I mean, what is cunty if we're not going to ruffle some feathers, right? I want us to get curious about the people that we spend the most time with, the people that are in our environments, the people that we look up to, the people that we idolize, all of these people that we surround ourselves with in different ways, it's been shown, studies have shown that this affects us. This changes our own mental, like, well-being. It is affected by the people who surround you. So if we're not intentional about this, if we don't stop and insert some curiosity, when especially when we experience a negative event or a harmful thing, um, this happened to me a couple months ago, you know, when I was in, when I was visiting some family, this happens and we have to get really curious about what are the stories that are telling me I am a bad person if I disagree or decide to put some distance between this person? What are the stories that are keeping us like stuck in unhealthy and like not productive relationships with the people that are close to us, you know, either in proximity or family ties, bonds. Um, a lot of times we've created relationships in the past and we hold on to them because we we think that that's what it means to be a good person is to have longevity but we need to get curious about that that story and redefine what it does mean to put our our mental well-being and our growth and our success as central in our own lives and really get curious about who we can surround ourselves with that aligns with that mission and that makes us feel the most happy, empowered, and cunty in our lives. So I'm going to throw it to you all. Um, please share if there has been a time where you needed to get curious about someone in your, in your circle or someone you looked up to um, or anything like that where you needed to take a step back and say, okay. Um, either this is working really well and I want to like keep putting in a lot of effort into this relationship or the reverse where it's like, I need to step back a little bit from this relationship because it's, it's really hindering my growth and my success. Um, Rebecca says, I met Naomi at a dance party and have been following the energy ever since. Yes, <laughs> I love you. I love it so much. Oh my God. ROI, hashtag ROI 2023. It was a time. We A time was had. <laughs> I adore you. I'm so, I'm so grateful that we met and that we have continued this amazing relationship that transcends ge geography. Okay. Let's just say that. So important. Um, yeah, so super important to get curious about the people that surround us. Another thing I want us to get curious about, oh, hand raise. Yes, Sunny. Um, I was thinking about when you were talking about surrounding yourself with folks, like there are times where people seem like they have goals that are aligned with yours. Um, mm -hmm. Cause for the most part, I don't fuck around with people who don't right. Have like similar goals or at least try to keep them distant. But I also think it's so important. Like there are people who feel like they do, but then there's a way in which they perceive themselves that continue kind of feeling like they don't have access to the thing that you want. And so they're um, when they're rooted in scarcity, even though they have the same goals, right? Like, let's say we're both entrepreneurs, but if they're like, there's no money, there's no money, there's no clients mm -hmm. that want me, right, and stuff like that, and, like, it's coming from a place of, like, I'm never gonna get there, then it turns into, like, this weird, one, it feels sometimes then awkward if you are getting something that they're not getting, right, yeah. but it feels like you're kind of in this trap where then you're both, like, in this loop of scarcity. Um, and I feel like that's something where I'm like, oh, that's something I also need to guard, right? It's not even just that we have similar goals, but it depends on how we're both approaching them and how we're talking about our failures and our losses about the thing. Absolutely. That is such a good point. And that's such a, like a 
cunty curiosity that you pursued, right? You took that minute to be like, wait, okay, we have the same goals, but something is not quite feeling right. And you did the work to investigate that a little bit further. And you're absolutely right. Like the, the even the words and just the energy that people can have have a effect on us. So you're right. It doesn't just matter that the, the goals are the same. And I've had this in my own life as well. Very ambitious people, but look at entrepreneurship and what it means to be successful and all of these things and well-being. Look at them very differently and have different approaches. And I feel it very much as like a positive minded person. I'm very sensitive to people who come in with their negativity and like their, this is never going to work for me attitude. I have to be really boundaried about that because I choose to just be like delusional and like positive and do the damn thing, right? Like, I'm just going to go with that. I, I'll never forget like uh, at ROI when Myron Golden was talking and he said something like, no, if you believe it, if you believe it can, or you believe it can't, both are, both are, are true. Like it, you have no evidence either way. So you might as well just believe that it's possible. Right? And like that changed my life. Cause I was like, oh my God, that's so true. That's what we do. We tend to like veer in the pessimistic direction, but it's that getting curious and like flipping that and saying, but what if? What if I could believe, so this is another curiosity piece, right? Is our beliefs. What if I could believe a different way and a different thing and something better is possible and that I can achieve and that I am, it all is working out for me, right? That's a lot of, of affirmation work is like just believing that it's possible and, and that it's happening for you and surrounding yourself with people that believe that as well. Uh, Becca says, I had a long, a lifelong friend. And in 2020, I realized their constant negativity was such a drag. So I stopped reducing, oh, reaching out. And while I miss them, I think that I miss the idea of the past ideal and not what it was. It's okay to wish someone the best and no longer help them elevate. And that is absolutely so powerfully true. And I'm so grateful that you're, that you shared that with us because this is real. And I think most of us go through these moments or we should, where we like audit the, the relationships that we have. And that's a lot of what I was already saying about like, what is happening? What is really happening here? And you, you nailed it on the head. It's like, we, we romanticize and we get attached to what something was. That's the cause of so much suffering in like the human experience is attaching ourselves to what something was at some point or something in the past, right? And it's so incredibly freeing to get yourself into the present and get curious with, but how are things right now? And how do I want to be moving through the world now? And who do I want around me now? And how do I want them to be supporting me now and moving forward? Absolutely. Right. You can either go, why me? Why me? Or you can say, well, why not me? Yes. I love it. Isn't curious curiosity like the best fucking thing? I love it. I love it. When I was creating this challenge, I was having so much fun. And as Rebecca knows, I was dreaming up this challenge like months ago. Sunny, I don't know if you know that, but it was months ago that I wanted to run this challenge and it's finally happening, y'all. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. So I want to pass it to you all and ask if there are any other ways that I haven't discussed yet that curiosity plays a big role in your life or in your business? I'm going to throw that question to you and let me know if you want to come off mute or if you want to drop it in the chat. It's totally up to you. And you on Instagram, you can feel free to comment. Sunny, go for it. I think my curiosity has come into like, who am I becoming? as I like keep mm. uh, updating my like goals and stuff, right? It's like, um, you know, when you were talking about money and stuff, like our narratives are tied so much to our identity, mm -hmm. right? It's like we, uh, if we all 
only knew being broke, if we only knew being poor and stuff like that, it becomes so intrinsically like tied to who we are, that the more um, I work on my goals, my ambition, it turns into like, who am I today? What is this version of me? Uh, like, what does she aspire to? What are they like wanting? And it's kind of like, uh, and it's a whole it's an identity shift, right? To like step into entrepreneurship, especially it's like, uh, oh, like, am I that bitch now? Am I that bitch who says like, yes, I charge thousands and as I should, you know? And it's like, uh, yes, it turns into just like, oh, what, what parts of me do I need to shed? But very much like, who am I today as I like step into this? So much. I love that. Like that just, that, that just like really hit me on a, on a, on a level because we have that power and that's what's so in like it that's so powerful and that's why I love this cunty energy and like using it as an empowerment tool and just everything that comes with that because we do get to have the power of who are we becoming and the, and it is an evolution like it's a constant process it's not just like I'm gonna decide today and then that's it forever and ever it's a constant process. We can be curious about who we're becoming every day. Like that can literally be a daily thing that we are practicing, that we are getting in touch with. I know that, you know, at different revenue levels, definitely we're, you know, getting curious about new things that are arising and coming into our field of awareness. Um, there's so many ways that we just consistently need to be checking in with ourselves and getting curious with ourselves and our identities. I love that so much. And the more we can be our true selves and bring that like even more into our essence and like share that with the world, the more like the world gets to just thrive. Cause I, I really believe that like the more, the more us we are and the more Cunty we are, the better off the world is going to be. Yes. Rebecca, did you have any ideas of ways that curiosity that you wanted to share? You don't have to, but let me know. Yeah, for me, I come from such a traditional career path mm -hmm. that going on your own in the first place is just weird and unheard of. And everybody assumes that you're going to face plant. Mm -hmm. But so much of it goes back to why, like, because like the, the healthcare system in the US is so incredibly broken. So why is it broken? Like, what are we going to do about it? And why are we accepting such BS all the time? Because the people I take care of are super complicated and everything we do is outside the box, but that's why I love it. And mm -hmm. it makes most people really uncomfortable. Like, oh, but should she be doing that? Right. Oh, but, oh, but. And I said, but why not? Right. Like, why can't we do something different? Because what you've been doing yeah. isn't working and you don't have any ideas. Yes. <laughs> so why not try it? Like worst case scenario, it doesn't pan out, but maybe it's amazing. Yes. And to yeah. not like be so stoic. Yes. Like we don't have to keep it so clinical and medical. You, it's not any fun. Yeah. I love that so much. I love that. And I've heard similar things with other people from very tightly regulated uh professions right i've heard it from lawyers i've heard it from yes. therapists hold on instagram always trying to kick me out on these challenges well deal with it um right like so these these industries really need us to ask these questions and like get curious about but who said and where is the rule book and where are the, where, show me where it says and why this is a thing that you are creating and you're perpetuating. And it's a lot of time it's out of fear, right? It's out of fear. What's going to happen. Like you said, like, you know, oh, you're going to face plant. It's a lot of like other people's bullshit. And that's what we talked about at the very beginning was like limitations, whether it's others or our own, it's getting curious about, but where's the evidence to support what you're saying? Like, can we get, can we just scroll back a little bit? Because we definitely, the more we do this and do this work, and the more you do your work, Rebecca, the more evidence you're actually creating that proves the opposite, that it is possible, that it is effective, that it is valuable and needed and an amazing um, 
complement to all the health services out there. And it's incredibly important for us to take our power back from these like professions that gatekeep and like guard and keep people out and keep people very like suppressed within. Um, that's, I, I, that's such a good point. And I'm thinking, right. Well, like, yeah, go ahead. Like if more people in healthcare were more curious, there would be a lot less medical PTSD. Because yeah. someone didn't just say, no, that's not a thing because they don't know the first thing about your body. You are always the expert on your own body and your brain. So yes. why are we putting that on you? Because I get stories from 20 years ago, like such and such doctor said this to me yeah. and you've been carrying it ever since when yeah. that person just knew nothing about what was going on in your brain and your body. Wow. Yeah. Nothing. And, and we're just not keep your mouth shut. <laughs> say, I don't know. You yeah. probably know best, like, let's try these things and circle back. Yeah. It's not any harder to say that. They need to come to this challenge and get more cunty, right? Like, exactly. Get, get curious. Yeah, I, st step on a few toes. <laughs> try something new. Try something that wasn't a one-page blurb in a textbook. <laughs> I adore you. I know that... Sunny, you were also in an industry before that felt like there were certain like rules and limitations and you yourself also, not to put you on the spot, but I, I know that you had to get curious about that as well and say, but who said, who said I can't go out on my own and do what I'm trying to do and be of incredible value to people? Um, Because somehow people assume that like we're trying to do something like wrong or like we're trying to... uh. Oh, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> you just all know how to do that. <laughs> Fun times. One moment. Okay, we're all muted. We're good. Um, hey Lauren. Oh my gosh, I didn't see you join in there. Yay. Um, yeah, Zoom has this new feature where like it won't show you everybody if the camera's off, like you can't see them. So my bad. <laughs> it's a new feature. We're learning. We're learning as we go. Um, yeah, I love that. I, I just love this conversation so much because it's so needed in so many spaces. And I love the entrepreneurs I get to connect with that are saying, but who said? Who said? And why can I not do something that is incredibly empowering for my people and is going to serve them and is going to lead to the greater good? Like, we're not trying to just come out here and do harm. We are trying to do good in the world, right? Sunny, go ahead. Okay. Also, like earlier, you had said, like, where's the rule book, right? And I think so much around who wrote the rule book, right? Mm -hmm. Like Rebecca, when you were talking about the healthcare system, right? Like I think so much around it's rooted in white supremacy, right? Like mm -hmm. I also left social work because uh, when I started learning about the actual diagnoses and where they came from, they were rooted in racism, right? Like there was actually a diagnosis um, early on that was created for enslaved people who wanted to run away. There was actually like a medical term that was like, there's no possible way you would want to run away. So there was actually a diagnosis created for that, right? And so when I think about like when I would talk to clients about their diagnoses, I would be very clear with them of like, for some people, this could feel really affirming, right? Some people could feel like, oh my God, a lot of things have been answered, right? But for some people, it's like, what does this mean about me now? And I'm like, your diagnoses, the things you struggle with are usually some sort of reaction to our fucked up system, right? Yeah. And so even when we think about the rules and the things that are science-based, a human still made them based off of their assumptions. And so I like question all of it, even when it seems like it's backed by science and all of these things. And like Rebecca was saying, right, this person knows nothing about your body and yet they're still saying, well, it can't be that, it can't be this because of whatever diagnoses exist instead of saying, maybe I don't know, maybe I don't know what's going on with you, you know? Yes. And another thing that came to my mind is also who's doing the research, who is getting the privilege and the funding to do the research, what studies are being pushed forward, which ones are being like canceled. That's another big part of that, right? And so I love that we're being curious on our end to gain and grow this critical thinking and this curiosity to keep empowering ourselves and not keep ourselves playing small and playing in according to someone else's rule book. 
um, the hysteria diagnosis, um, bike face. Does anyone know about bike face? So bike face was an actual like diagnosis that once I think it was, it was around the time that bikes were invented and women wanted to use them because like women still weren't having access to cars, I think is how it was going. So the bike was a really amazing tool to give women more access to go places, right? Oh my God, shocker. So there was this diagnosis that came out that was bike face because women made a, a, a face and it was going to like affect their face while they were biking. And this was, it was like to, to make women scared to bike. It's like, what the fuck? How is this a real thing? Like this actually was a thing. And people are using these examples of things that are so wrong as ways to remind us that we can't take everything at face value. We can't take certain things as like, like, um, undisputable truths. We always have the possibility. We always have the option to get curious and ask questions and get critical about who's holding the rule book, who gets to the funding, who gets to do the research, who gets involved in the research, right? There's a lot of queer folks that don't even get involved in the research and other groups. So it's really, really important for us as we grow these country businesses and grow our country lives to continue and keep this spirit of curious. And yes, there are going to be people who, lo and behold, try to pin it as um, uh, there's so many words that this and feel free to drop some in the chat. The words that come to my mind for are like nosy or um out of your out of line or like unruly or like mind your own business or stop being being smart or like a smart aleck or something like there's so many ways that people might get upset that we are asking questions and that we're getting curious because it's seen as an affront and like an uprising <laughs> in a way it kind of is but like we can't let people's opinions of our own curiosity get in the way because curiosity is a gift and it's something that we get to own. Uh, Rebecca said the autism diagnosis process was written by a white guy who still feels that women can't be autistic. Like what? What the fuck? <laughs> like, what is happening? I'm sure if, if, I don't know if any of you have like a DSM, but I'm like, I'm sure if we open that thing up, it's like a psychology diagnosis book. I'm sure we would find some pretty messed up shit. <laughs> Controlling, disrespectful. Yes. Problematic. I know you said so problematic about the DSM, but also that could be a word that can be used to like put us down, right? Oh, you're being problematic. You're being um, disruptive, right? <laughs> it's like, yes, tell me more. <laughs> Talk dirty to me. Call me problematic. Call me a cunt. Because now we all know if someone's calling you a cunt, you can thank me and say, yes, bitch, I am a cunt. I am cunty as fuck. Thank you. <laughs> uh, defiant. Oppositional defiant disorder normally given to young black boys. Wow. Do you see? Like, it's so true. It's so true. If it's working, why waste energy on it? No, it's not working for us. Yeah. A lot of times people are like, just let it go. Just let it go. Like, stop worrying. It's fine. And we're like, listen. We're here built like we have a we have big missions. We have big goals. We have people that need us. We are like serving our people. We are empowering our people. We're not just going to like let it go. Like there are hills that we get to die on and we're not just going to we're not just going to like be like, "Okay. Hey, all right. I'm just going to just going to stop. Like I'm just going to let it all go, you know? That's not how we fuck shit up." <laughs> like that is not we gotta we gotta stand up and do the thing I'm not saying pick every battle but pick the battles that feel like the most 
in, in the way of you and your goals and your missions, whatever they are that are standing in the way, like Rebecca, for you, for example, it was those people that were questioning you about, well, why would you go outside of the medical system? You're going to fall flat on your face. Like, you know, all those things that you said, that was a really important battle for you to, to pick. And you did it and you're, and you've gotten through that. I mean, for the most part, I'm sure there's still people that, that try and question you like, you know, obviously always, um, but you're doing the thing and you're collecting that evidence that you're, you're doing the right thing and people need you and you're serving people. And that's so beautiful. So glad you rebelled. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I love my community. You all are my fucking favorite humans. I am just like so honored that we get to sit and chat all things cunty. Um, so thanks for, for joining in on this challenge. I really, really appreciate you all. They can go simmer in their dislike, do what they are doing. They aren't happy there. Yeah. That's their business. That's their business. Look, if they want to do that thing, they can do whatever they want. We're not going to be telling people what to do. I mean, you can, if that's your thing, but they can do their thing. We do our thing. We keep, you know, getting curious and keep pushing the, pushing the envelope, right? And we're going to fucking achieve massive things in our lives, each and every one of us. And I'm just so grateful to be witness and co-conspirator on your, your journeys. It makes me so happy. Um, and I'm going to be wrapping up shortly, but does anyone have any other questions? This was an, a phenomenal conversation. I've loved every minute of this. Um, does anyone have any last questions or comments about curiosity? No, we're feeling good. We're feeling good. Yay. Thumbs up. Okay. Thank you so, so much. I'm going to end the Instagram. Bye Instagram. Um, thank you so much for joining. And tomorrow is day four of the challenge already. We're, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're doing the thing. Um, tomorrow is the last day of the first phase. And tomorrow we're talking about confidence, which yesterday I, you know, I kind of, I didn't hate on confidence, but I was just like, just wait your turn. Just wait your turn confidence because courage has to come first and then we can talk about confidence. So tomorrow we get to talk about confidence finally um, a little bit more and I'm so excited. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. How do I do that? Be good. There we go.